the virgin cut. <laughs> so this is the first time this out here, I'm guarantee it's the first time it's ever been cut with a lawnmower in 2,000 years. That's my statement. <laughs> All right. So I wanted to start out and try it first, see how we went. We still have a lot of cleanup work to do. We want to turn this area into a nice little flower garden over here. That's why we left this all rough. Um, we've already ground down, in case you're wondering, we've ground out over 30 stumps off this property. That one we're actually going to do something cool with. Eventually, we're also going to put a little gravel area and a gravel path down to there and do a little fire pit with like two Adirondack chairs, so that'll be cool. But I did a video talking about this area. We This area was nasty. <laughs> we took out, what, 20 trees just in here. Of course, there's some storm damage. We had storm damage. We've lost, I want to say 30 trees. We couldn't get out of our driveways. I had to schedule the big tree guy. He's going to be here two days. Pretty bad, but I'm blessed because no one was hurt, no property damage other than trees falling and having to get my crew over here to open up driveways. Right down the road, there are huge oak trees that are down on people's houses. I'm not complaining. All right, so I did a video on this about the crabgrass in here. I have a real big crabgrass problem. Someone was asking, do you think it was there already? Yes, we have crabgrass all over this property. It's a farm and you're gonna have crabgrass. So um, I read, I did a video about reading the labels and the one I'm gonna use I think is drive. And it says that it can be used, if you have a tolerant grass, it can be used after seeding and germination. So we're going to try it. But I want you to see what it looks like before I cut it. And before I cut it, look at this. This is Bermuda right here. See that? Big, long Bermuda. But then I've also got <clears throat> crabgrass. I'm actually kind of excited because this is the first cut of it. It's looking real. I've got a ton of germination. Here's the thing, guys. I've got three stages of germination. I've got three inch, five, I got four inch long uh, Bermuda. I've got like two inch long Bermuda, and then I've got Bermuda sprigs. Now the same thing out back, I have two stages of Bermuda germination. I have some Bermuda that's about two inches long, and then I have actually three stages. I have a two, one, and then sprigs just coming up. So that back, it looks ugly as hell right now, I'm telling you but it's gonna look nice and we're gonna do a leveling, but I wanna wait till that early germination gets in. So this is, uh, this is making me happy. So we had all this rain and all the storms and all this damage. So I'm gonna cut this today. I'm gonna wait at least 24 hours, maybe even longer. And then I'm gonna come out with a backpack sprayer, I think, and I'm gonna spray that drive on there. I'm probably, I might even tomorrow come out here with some super juice put some super juice down now we talked about it some people are asking what I use here to keep the pond from stuff from leaching in the pond and I talked about it in a previous video we don't use slow release fertilizers here everything we use here is fast release we wait till the soil is dry I have irrigation I turn my irrigation I get it into the soil even if it rains it won't go off so I'm using green shocker maybe uh, green shocker and super juice basically out here if I need to put down a little bit of PGF balance, which is a 10-10-10, I can do that after I'm gonna get a soil test. I haven't done that yet. But for right now, just a little bit of nitrogen, a little bit of iron, micros. So anyways, here I go. It's kind of dangerous out here. I have to have my guys come do final cleanup because I'm still running into some sticks out here. But I mean, look at that. From where we were, from where we were to where we are now, I am not gonna complain about that. Now we have to come through here and we got crap like this lying all around. So we probably need to run a rake over this, but man, look at that. Isn't that great? Very happy.
looks so good. Uh, I'll be honest with you, Ryan's gonna be shocked when he sees this because I don't know that either of us thought that this would come out that nice. Maybe I can find a before picture. What this place, this is a living hell hole when we first bought this place. And look at it now. It's gonna be solid Bermuda all through here. We're gonna continually clean it up. We're gonna pick up sticks. We're gonna cut out some roots, clean it, but man, that is gorgeous. And I've got, of course I have my irrigation system in here. So I'm trenched in with irrigation. Runs out of a shallow well. I can water as much as I want. A little bit of super juice, a little bit of green shocker. Man, I'm happy. So it's the next day, sunscreen on my face. I'm prepped up for the, I'm prepped up for the, the long day I got ahead of me. I just want to show you, maybe I'll stand back here and show you just how good this looks. Isn't that nice? Now keep in mind, this is brand new. I still have germination seeds that are a quarter of an inch long in here. We did multi seedings, several level of seedings, but man, that looks so nice. All right, so before I show you, um, understand that this was a beautiful cool season lawn and we took it all off because we got a whole bunch of fungus issues and i i knew it was going to die off because of this heat when we took it all off and scalped it we found some zoysia under here which is unusual so zoysia seed is almost non-existent because of crop failures and other stuff and if you can get it it's real expensive so i went over to bermuda i used a few different types of bermuda including blackjack um, Blackjack 2 and a couple common Bermudas, you know, the stuff you buy at Lowe's and Home Depot. But can you see all the little sprigs here? Look at that. So that's brand new germination. That's brand new germination. So four weeks from now is probably when this whole thing will turn solid green. Now my concern is that I have two big bags of leveling mix over there and I had planned to do a leveling here, but I've got baby Bermuda and I go covering up that with leveling mix so I probably have to I really should hold off a week on the leveling let that stuff come up to where I give it a chance and what I'll probably do is I'll also probably come out here and throw more seed down during the leveling process just to be sure just to make sure I get it well I actually had a little bit of a change in plans I'm actually going to spray super juice on the back and why is that because I don't see any rain for the next 10 days <laughs> so if I put down a fertilizer it's going to be weird Super Juice is really good on brand new seeding because it's so mild, it has humic acid, fulvic acid, it has sea kelp, it has micronutrients, and it has iron, and it's very mild and you control. It's just a spoon feed. So I'm gonna come out here, I decided I'm actually gonna spray Super Juice on this back as well as the front. I'll probably throw down a little bit of Green Shocker here and Green Shocker out front. The problem is, is I thought I had a whole case of those spray bottles, the 20 to 1 ratio, and that's what you want is a 20 to 1 ratio spray bottle. And uh, I just emailed my guy, contacted Anderson's, and they're out of stock on Amerson, so on Amazon, so I'll have to check on that. I'm going to try. I've got two hose bottles here. I'm going to see how they do. One of them's a garden organic spray, and one of them's a fungicide bottle, so I don't know what will happen. <laughs> Pretty big area. Okay, so that is the official super juice stirring stick now. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna let that sit. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut the back with a real mower. And then I'm gonna grab the other UTV and go up there and cut that field. I'm gonna come back and or maybe I'll spray this before I do that and then I want to put down some dirt booster out here and maybe even some dirt booster out here so I got a full day ahead of me so relaxing Sunday for dog. All right, so I'm up here in the barn, and uh, we, my Father's Day present, I have put off for a year and a half, and I finally got it. I'm gonna do a video on it. And it's the, the new John Deere back there. <laughs> we decided to buy this cheap Axis, which is half the price, 
when we first got the property because we knew we were going to beat the hell of it and it's survived. <laughs> so now what I can do is I can actually leave this unit, which is I consider my little workhorse, beat up workhorse, and I leave my cutter attached to it and I just park it up here under the barn and uh, it's really nice and we use that one. That one's got power steering, this one doesn't. The wife can't drive this one, it's too hard to drive. So anyways, let's go cut a field. Someone asked me how the old DR, DR Power Pro 44T was holding up. <laughs> Love this thing. Isn't that gorgeous? That is absolutely gorgeous. You know, this is the end of July. Most people have brown fields. When we keep this, you know, this is the shortest I'll cut this, which is about maybe eight inches up to 10, about eight inches, I would say. That's the shortest cut I'm doing on this. All this, all this organic matter that I'm cutting is being returned to the ground. Clover is nitrogen fixing. So it's just a wonderful thick lush. And I've got uh, I've got strips of brassica in here, but I went ahead and cut anyways. Look at all the bugs in here. Look at this, man. This is like a little heaven in here. So <clears throat> that's a purple top turnip. And you can see they don't grow real big in here right now, but in the fall they'll get huge. But look how lush this is. I mean, this is just super lush. Look like little leaf hoppers or something. That's just gorgeous, man. So, what's funny is, is the deer will just be stacked in here tonight. Anytime I do a cut, and I give them that access to that real fresh sort of young stuff and I start to regenerate the growth in here, man, they just pile, they're piling here anyway. As a matter of fact, I have a photograph of like 12 does up in the field going to sleep. <laughs> Actually bedding down out here. Much better. The problem is, is it's, it's not a 20 to one, so it's not coming out fast enough. It's probably a 30 or 40 to one ratio spray head on it, so. I don't know, we'll see. I'll do this and then I'll put out some green shocker. Oh man. So, once again, I'm kind of pissed at myself because I warned you guys about order and making sure order right now go through your inventory or whatever you need for the next 60 to 90 days and order it in the description below you'll see a page and there's links to everything you know you're going to have army worms if you got bermuda or and so order some of the double kill you know you're going to need green shocker coming up or we're going to put out dirt booster get it whatever whatever you need you need to go down there that link and order it now because i went to order spray bottles out of stock but there are some 30 to 1 but I don't need 30 to 1's I want the 20 to 1 ratio so if you're trying to order them I'm sorry so I'm, what I'm gonna do I've got a change in plan here I'm thinking about this more and more and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put green shocker out here first and then I'm gonna come out with uh, the super juice the spray super juice is great for new germinating lawn so mild it's perfect stays in that upper layer so why do why am I using green chakra out here because green chakra is a real specialty formula we asked Andersons to go in here and develop this for you guys and for me basically it's a putting green fertilizer 
It's super, super fine particle. It looks like black salt. Put it in water and within two minutes it's completely dissolved and it goes right in. So even if you, then you water it, water it, water it, boom, you get a nice little pop green. Even if it rains, however, it will not leach off because it's in the soil first. Your soil then has to get saturated and then water runs off. So this is green shocker and the problem with green shocker is that you can't see it when it goes out. See how small that is? Particle distribution, that's the absolute key to this. If you're gonna put out a fine fertilizer, if you're gonna put out a mild fertilizer, you have to have superior particle distribution. You really have to trust your, I said this before on Green Shocker, you really have to trust your lines. So normally with like a big white chunky fertilizer or something, you can look and you can see the particles flying. You kind of have to know, okay, this stuff's gonna fly three feet on either side. So you gotta pick your line and then you gotta go three feet, three feet, and then come back. So you really gotta sort of trust your lines. And it's that's why I like to do it when there's a dew on the grass because you can see your lines, you know, exactly. because you cannot see this fertilizer grow up. That's the only problem. So it's only about 11.30. <laughs> Doc's been up since five, been working his butt off. I'm trying to get up early and get a lot of this stuff done before it gets too hot. But I did want to show you, I mentioned earlier some of the storm damage. You know, we have a thousand foot driveway on this, the main drive, and I was smart. I installed this driveway all the way through the field so we'd have a big circle in case that driveway, which is surrounded by trees, got blocked and sure as hell. I think we had six or seven trees down on that one. And of course, a big pine tree fell across this one. We can still get out. I can drive through the, the grass over there, but I want to show you. We had, well, I'm going to say about 25 trees down. We cleared what we need to clear to get in and out, but it's going to be two full days of tree work out here. It ain't going to be cheap. It's time for a dot GoFundMe <laughs> to pay for my damn tree bill. I guarantee it's $7,000 of the tree work I got to have done. There's some big trees, as an example. So there's the back of the house, and I think you guys may have seen me point at these big trees right here. And that tree has an old break right there. And then this part, half of the tree, this is a whole half of that tree. That thing fell. That is just massive. And let me show you where it came from. And you can see where it came from right there. Just snapped right off of there. Now my problem is, is that tree now is leaning that way. <laughs> so <laughs> that whole tree has got to come down. I mean, I got trees down everywhere, but I mean, when you own 50,000 trees on 40 acres and you have um, a 60 mile an hour wind come through here, it was bad, man. I've been through a lot of storms. I've been through hurricanes, tornadoes go by me. It was pretty bad for about 15 minutes. Every tree around here was just going this. But uh, that's gonna be another video. Now, one thing I am gonna do for you guys, we look, fortunately, when I have this house, when we redid this house, one of the main things I, I really wanted was a whole house generator plug. So I can, I have a little shed over here that stores all my generator equipment. And all I have to do is shut off a few switches, plug it in and the house has power. That saved our lives. Now, you remember that air conditioner video I did? <laughs> that saved us, man, because it's hot and humid. And that air conditioner in the bedroom, man, we were freezing cold at night. Everyone else around us was sweating hot because they didn't have power. And that thing, that my little generator out there ran the refrigerator, ran two AC units, ran lights. I mean, all kinds of stuff. But here's the future plan. The future plan is solar. So I'm talking to a company right now that's a very reputable company and I'm going to do a series on getting ripped off by solar because I've been working on this for about six months now and there's a bunch of scams out there. I want to take that barn because it faces north-south and has a real flat roof. 
I want to put solar panels on that barn. In that room that we're really not using, I want to put the storage center, all the battery bank in there, and then I want to trench power down to the house. That's my plan. We'll see if it comes to fruition. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I can probably get one of their reps down here, one of their com uh, company reps down here, and maybe walk you guys through some real good information about solar if you're thinking about it. As I'm warning you, man, there's a bunch of shady companies that will tell you crap that's not true. And everyone's going to say, why don't you do it yourself, Doc? Do it yourself, Doc. I don't do electricity simply because of insurance. I ran into an issue a few years ago. One of my friends did some work on his house, and they denied about a $12,000 insurance claim because he didn't have a permit, and he didn't have an electrician, certified electrician, do the work. So I ain't doing it myself. I don't mess with electricity. So anyways, uh, that's enough for today, man. I got a lot more coming. We got a leveling we got to do out here. I really want you guys to make sure you're subscribed to see an update on this lawn because it's really going to turn out nice. The back and that front, man, as you can tell, I'm excited about it because it's going to look good. I got to go put out Dirt Booster later tonight. Talk to you later, Doc.